Um, hello, my topic is about the section on pre-stress concrete. I also included the cumbering since these two are related to each other. Well, not much on cumbering, but I would like to discuss some points regarding it. Camber is the upward deflection in the beam after release of the pre-stressing strands due to the eccentricity of the force in the strands. This camber is reduced by the downward deflection of the girder due to the girder's self-weight. The camber of the beam is usually the lead largest contribution to punch. Camber may increase with concrete grip and with time and by grip, by ACI definition, it is time-dependent deformation due to sustained load and is indicated when strain in a solid increase with time while the stress producing the strain is kept constant. Camber in pre-stress concrete girders is affected by several factors such as the girders cross-sectional properties, concrete material properties, strand stress, um, ambient, ambient temperature, and relative humidity. Uh, the benefit of camber in pre-stress, especially on precast concrete products, is that it allows for longer spans, shallower depth sections, and higher load carrying capabilities that than conventional building materials. However, cumbering have also limits. Excessive roof camber may create drainage problems. On excessive floor camber, it leads to partition cracking and other non-structural cracking. And bridge camber may cause pavement to be uneven, even dangerous. Camber in pre-stressing concrete bridge girders is the upward deflection that is caused due to the pre-stressing forces applied on the bridge girder. The objectives of providing cambers are surface protection, especially for gravel and bituminous roads, subgrade protection by proper drainage, quick drying of pavement, which in turn increase safety. Uh, and then we have four of the most significant variables properties of the concrete that must also be considered like grip of the concrete, concrete temperature, the magnitude, and the location of the tree stress. For the past reports, Engineer Dios and Andreas have already introduced us about deflection and the methods on calculating the deflection, such as the, the double integration, moment area, conjugate beam, and to add is the principle of virtual work. However, there are also limits to consider, especially for the factors and if the approach for RC beams would be compatible also to distress concrete beams. Well, to consider, there's a difference. The enforced concrete is a composite material with low tensile strength and ductility of the concrete, fortified by the addition of reinforcing steel bars having higher tensile strength and ductility. Pre-stress concrete is a form of reinforced concrete that builds in compressive stresses during construction to oppose those found when in use. Shown here is a summary chart differentiating RC from PC for further reference. Like in RC, only the position of concrete above neutral axis is useful in resisting the external forces, while in pre-stress concrete, Hole of the concrete is useful in resisting the external forces. In RC, it requires mild steel and concrete of lower grade. And in PC, it requires high tensile steel and concrete of higher grade. So there's a difference there. In RC again, it needs more quantity of concrete and which this results to heavy section, while in PC, this results to saving in weight because it needs less quantity of concrete and steel. Now here in deflection, uh, pre-stressed concrete has important advantages over reinforced concrete. First, the entire section is effective in resisting the applied moment, whereas only the section above the neutral axis is fully effective in reinforced concrete. This leads to greatly reduced deflections under service conditions. 
the total deflection is a resultant of the upward deflection due to pre-stressing force and downward deflection to the due to the gravity loads. The deflection of a flexural member is calculated to satisfy a limit state of serviceability. Only the flexural deformation is considered and any shear deformation is neglected in the calculation of deflection. The effect of deflection in a structure varies according to the use of the structure. It says here, excessive deflections may lead to sagging floors, to roof that do not drain properly, to damage partitions and finishes, to the creation of pools of water on road surface of bridges, and to other associated troubles. Excessive deflection is likely to cause damage to finishes, partitions, and associated structures. That is why implementation of PC requires perfect supervision at all stage construction. And structural concrete members should be designed to have adequate stiffness to limit deflections. We have here factors influencing deflections like uh, fixed condition, imposed load and self-weight, modulus of elasticity of concrete, shrinkage, creep, and relaxation of steel stress, magnitude of the pre-stressing force, table profile, second moment of area of cross-section, and span of the member. Effect of tendon profile on the section. Pre-tension concrete is cast around on already tensioned tendons. This method produces a good bond between the tendon and concrete, which both protects the tendon from corrosion and allows for direct transfer of tension. Since the bending moment at every section is the product of the pre-stressing force and eccentricity, the tendon profile itself will represent the shape of the bending moment diagram. Shown here are the deflections for different types of tendon profile. We have trait tendons, trapezoidal tendons, parabolic tendons if eccentric anchor or central anchor. Then we have sloping tendon, combination of parabolic and the deflection of a member is calculated at least for two cases. We have the long term and the short term. The short term also termed as the instantaneous deflection. The long term deflection under service load is due to the effective pre-stressing force and the total gravity loads, self-weight, sustained dead load, and live load. Long term deflections take into account the long term shrinkage and creep grip movement, um, the time dependent, humidity and temperature ranges during curing, age of concrete at the time of loading, and type of aggregates, water to cement ratio, amount of compression reinforcement, size of members, which influence the grip and shrinkage concrete. Uh, these are the major factors influencing long-term deflection of structures while the short term or the instantaneous deflection the influencing factors are magnitude and distribution of live loads span and type of and supports cross-sectional area of the members amount of steel reinforcement and the stress developed in the reinforcement characteristic strengths of concrete and steel and Amount of amount and extent of fracture. Short term or instantaneous deflection at transfer is due to the initial pre-stressing force and self-weight without the effect of creep and shrinkage of concrete. Short term deflection of pre-stressed members are governed by the bending moment distribution along the span and the flexural rigidity of the members. It occurs immediately upon the application of a load caused by elastic deformation of the concrete in response to loading. To differentiate further, short-term deflection means the immediate deflection after casting and application of partial or full service loads, while the long-term deflection occurs 
over a long period of time, largely due to shrinkage and creep of the material. As mentioned from the previous report, different methods for obtaining deflections due to gravity loads were double integration method, moment area method, conjugate beam method, and principle of virtual work. Well, deflection due to pre-stressing force. The pre-stressing force causes a deflection only if the CGS is eccentric to the CGC. Deflection due to pre-stressing force is calculated by the load balancing method. We have here moment of inertia where U is untrapped, T is for transition, C is trapped. We also have the formula for effective moment of inertia and moment of inertia when it is trapped. I also included here two sample problems. Uh, for sample one, um, for the first problem, it is stated here the simply supported I beam shown in cross section and elevation is to carry a uniform service live load totaling 18 newton per meter over 12 meters span in addition to its own weight. The beam will be pre tensioned using multiple 7 watt strands. Eccentricity is 130 millimeters and constant. The pre stressing force immediately after transfer is 750 kilonewton, reducing to 530 kilonewton effective. 28 day compressive strength of concrete is 40 megapascals. We need to calculate the deflection and check with allowable values. The, the diagram is shown here and the solution for solving the problem is through approximate method. For the second problem, uh, we need to de determine the mid-span deflection of the beam um, at transfer with an in inertial pre-stress force of 6,800 kN, then under an imposed load of 30 kN per meter when the pre-stress force has been reduced to 4,500 kN, take self-weight of beam 11.26 kN per meter, I is equal to 0 0.006396 me, uh, meters raised to fourth. Um, modulus of elasticity is equal to 28 times 10 raised to 6 kN per square meter. Then, after solving that, we need to determine the long term deflection of the beam if two thirds of the total service load is permanent. Assume FCU at 28 day is 40 newton per square millimeter the width is 930 millimeters and the depth is 1035 millimeters area for the cross section for it's 47.82 times um, 10 raised to 4 square millimeters the solution for the problem for the sample problem is shown and um, my simple report ends here. For further references, I'll be posting the link below. Thank you for listening.